since the dawn of civilization when people wanted to take control of humanity the way that we are what it means to be us people united with their beliefs in order to create security maybe a false sense of security it's a sense of security that today allows most people to waste their entire life on something that they themselves will deem meaningless the moment they leave their bodies and we all know where this is headed we all know that life the way that it is has a beginning and has an end and so in order to feel secure in order to feel safe in order to feel like we belong to something bigger man has been searching for what to worship and how to worship it and throughout the generations different ideas arose some closer to the truth than others until the concept of worship became so ingrained in the minds of the civilized human that they didn't question any behavior that is recommended as a form of worship humanity did the most horrible things to themselves and to each other in the name of worshiping something they don't see and cannot understand and so humanity lost its power humanity lost its intelligence in the way that humanity would be seen from the eyes of the wise humanity has gone completely insane the behaviors of the human race today are not in their own interest it is in nobody's interest it serves absolutely no one it deteriorates the quality of life because we don't respect the divine creator we don't believe that life is divine and so we interact with life as if life is mundane and we end up serving and worshiping our entire life and not necessarily knowing why and for who we're doing it and so to bring humanity back to sanity means to realize the intelligence that was once present on this planet the reason the ancient wisdom isn't understood today is not because the ancient wisdom was primitive it is because humanity doesn't even understand what it wants so how is it going to appreciate a map that tells it how to get it and so to find intelligence 
is to remove from ourselves all the perceptions that are causing harm to us or to any other human being or to anything that exists for that matter. If humanity will rid itself from its toxic perceptions about what's happening on this planet, then their behavior will reflect that shift in awareness. Their behavior will cause the new perceptions to be more pleasing to the human spirit. Those perceptions will be more pleasing to the human body. And that causes sensations, pleasing sensations, that improve the perceptions and allow for more access to the imagination and to the intelligence. And so the door is wide open, everything is available. The only thing missing is intelligence. Humanity is insane. Humanity has lost their minds. They're fighting, they're competing, and nobody gains because they've forgotten the type of species that they are. They've forgotten their own nature. We weren't designed to do what we're doing. We're not helping ourselves. There's a reason so many people suffer with so much frustration. It's because we're doing it wrong. We're worshipping ideas that are not real. We're worshipping structures that don't exist. They're magical. They appeared out of nowhere from someone's brain. They have nothing to do with reality whatsoever. And this form of idol worship separates us from our intelligence because it would be too painful to be intelligent when the options of satisfying those perceptions are not available. And so each generation, according to the environment that they create, they gain access to different levels of wisdom, different levels of intelligence, different levels of life, of experience, of realization, of truth. And all in accordance with their beliefs. Their beliefs are the vessels within which the infinite light can shine. The light that cannot be defined. The light that is dressed up as every human being that ever walked the planet. And sometimes showed the most beautiful shining face. And sometimes showed the most ugly cruel face. No animal is as cruel as a cruel human. And no animal is as kind as a kind human. A human being can be all animals. But the kosher animals are specifically ones, those who don't feed off of others, others of its kind. The other animals are tome. They're not sensitive enough for us to consume them because we don't want to be desensitized. And so if our beliefs are appropriate, reality becomes that instantly because that's the nature of biology. Whatever you think is real, that's what your body is responding to. Your body doesn't know reality. It only knows what you tell it. And so if we can become completely quiet, if we're not worshipping any idols, only then can our body teach us reality. Because if we're interpreting reality, our body responds to that. 
and then we don't know reality anymore. We've lost access. We have access to our own interpretation. That's it. If we're silent, then our body can tune into reality and tell us what's real. And so, the Pasik says in Kedoshim, Degumach Nefraim, Altiflu ele alulim. Don't turn to the little gods. Pasik says, Kikole leheo amamalilim. The gods, the divinities worshipped by the other nations, the little gods. Vashem Shemaim also. Hashem created the heavens. The heavens, perception. But what does it mean, the little gods? Why are they called little gods? Little gods give them a real place. And that's because the nations were worshipping the stars, the planets, astrological signs. Because those forces created our bodies and they run our bodies. And so, different nations worshipped different parts of creation. Different nations developed different parts of creation more than others. Specifically, the Greeks, the Romans, they designed their entire culture in a way that can create the best soldiers. So they're worshipping Mars, the god of war. That was their primary desire, their, their interpretation of power was to be able to overcome others through physical force. This materializes the perception. This brings the desire, the interpretation, the beliefs down to the most physical level. The subtle side of life loses its preciousness. It loses its meaning. It loses its purpose, its importance. And so it's only a matter of time before everything we know about the subtle is going to be forgotten. Because everyone wants physical power. So this is called worshipping a little god. Mars was created and designed by the divine. He's here for a reason. Humanity needs to know how to protect themselves in certain times of need. However, it wasn't meant to be worshipped. We shouldn't have a culture of competition just so we can have better fighters to conquer the world. This is not the desire of the one, the one who created Mars, the one who created us, the one who created all. This type of thinking takes the human being and the world out of balance. And who pays when the world is out of balance? We, the humans. So he says, Darsha Chazal, Altifnu El Midatchem. Altifnu El Elilim, don't go in that direction, don't go to the little gods, which means don't ever forget about the big God. And never forget about the unity, about the force that created all forces. And so, if you're not going to forget the one, then you're not serving the little ones. If you've forgotten the one, where are you? 
Who are you worshipping? What are you doing? You've lost touch, you've lost contact. You're serving a little god. You're serving something that's not necessarily in your best interest. This is what it says, Don't let the force within all forces leave your awareness. This stimulates an area in your brain that when it becomes developed enough will keep you connected at all times without any effort whatsoever. So it says, "Yesh lo avin zeh alpi mashomer adoni avizkani al posik v'sartem avadatem elim achayim v'sartem." As soon as you move away from the truth, from the reality created by the Creator, you're already serving idols. You're already serving some perception, some image, some illusion that is not really in your best interest. As soon as a person separates from being attached to the source in his thought, you're already serving others. To understand what the Hashem is saying, we have to be within the inner chambers of his way of seeing life, of his perception. Of his wisdom, but nevertheless, we come to the Dega will give us some insight into this statement from the Baal Shem Tov that as soon as you've forgotten the one, you've lost yourself in the many. A person who serves the Creator in all his ways. He remembers that in every situation, everything, every experience, every feeling, every sensation, every thought, everything is there to serve the one purpose. So a person you should know him in all your ways. He does everything with awareness. He's constantly aware of what's taking place because this is no simple place to be. Don't let your imagination fool you. You are in a precious place where you can gather spiritual diamonds. Spiritual diamonds that have everlasting value. And as soon as you leave your body, you can no longer collect diamonds. You'll know the value of the diamonds. Everyone knows the value of the diamonds. Once they're not in the body. But they can no longer collect any diamonds. Diamonds are realizations of the one who created everything. And in this world, we can ask, we can interact, we can read, discover, we can meditate and search within ourselves. We have access to infinite sources of intelligence. And the intelligence we collect become us. It changes our perception and therefore it changes our spiritual trajectory. How are we going to perceive the One? Now, as we age, as we get closer to leaving, in the moments when we leave, and then we just go straight into that trajectory that we've created for ourselves. So what does the one mean to us? Because as we leave the body, we're going to realize the one. The one that was expressing itself through the body. 
we're going to meet and see how well did we guess what it really is and what it really wants. It is already that. Many have died before us, they've realized we're still within the physical costume, we can't realize yet. We have to download the information to our brain first before we can realize how it feels to experience it. This is the nature of being embodied, is that all our information is stored within a physical brain. We don't have access to what it's like to be a spirit. We only know what it's like to be a spirit inside a body with our very specific circumstances and knowledge. And so he says, one who does everything that he does with the knowledge of the one, he eats, he drinks, he sleeps, he's aware. What am I doing? I'm serving the one who created this. Do I want to sleep as an individual? If I was a spirit and didn't have a body, and you asked me, do you ever want to sleep? And I would ask, what is sleep? And you'd say, sleep is when you have to leave everything and just be quiet for a while so your body can reorganize. I'd say, I don't see the purpose in that. Why would I want to sleep? And yet, the creator that created me, in all his wisdom, he said, my boy, you need to sleep. And so when I'm going to sleep, who am I serving? And the same thing when I eat. The wisdom created that we need to sort through all the different types of life, whether it's the plant life or the animal life in order to rectify the energy of this planet. So we consume energy from external sources. This is his desire. This is his design. This is not an individual. When one goes to eat, it's not because he would personally like to eat. Maybe he chose what to eat. He chose when to eat. chose how much to eat. But eating is a divine order. Eating is because that's what he wants. And the same goes for everything that we do. We're here, we're, we're here on his terms, not on our terms. We can do with that certain things. We have different forms of expression where we can gain more and more access to intelligence. But the design and the interactions are beyond our perception. They come from the One, the One, the Force, the Force that designed all and lives in all. The intelligence that makes us be. The intelligence that allows for a human being to exist inside a physical body and runs all the different systems in order to make it so and allows from within that organism for the organism itself to be aware of its existence through the magic of combining the spiritual with the physical perception and matter converted by biology. The biology of which the humans themselves are still trying to figure out. 
And so everything that we do, we do for the one. It's already so. Just realize it. Do yourself a favor and realize it so that you'll get what you deserve for doing that with the right intention so that you will develop that realization within yourself. Because if you think you're doing it for yourself, you're just missing the point. You're developing something inside that's not friendly, that's going to end up coming to realization that that self that it thought it was working for doesn't really exist. That desire was just something that was painted into the perception at some age. It's not really true. It's not really within your nature. And so, everything is for the one. With the beer of him, oil and bikidele carbon. Why does he interact with people? Because he wants to bring them closer to a pure perception. He wants to unite the one within everyone. Oi, v'chdele so many atzves. Maybe he's talking to others to remove from himself sadness. Well, there's plenty in this world to be sad about if we focus on them. And not always can we get out of dodge fast enough. Sometimes there are things, beliefs that we received early on in life that cause us to feel a certain way about different circumstances. And then we have to Feel that, digest that, realize that. So as we're going through different phases, we can use others to stabilize our energy, to find our way back. So he's talking to others because he wants to remove sadness. Or because he needs sustenance, he needs to make an income in order to be able to continue existing on this planet. To, to exist on this planet, they charge for it. You can't just exist here like all the other animals. And so, in order to sustain himself, he has to, he has to spend time interacting with people. Because if he won't do that, then he's going to be even more distracted from his service to the One. Vimois is as bedas if he does all these things with the correct intention, with the right with the right awareness. As I hackle Nasa everything becomes holy work. Everything becomes part of his sacred duty to serve the one that created him. These are called Khilin the mundane that is created with the right intention, with the purity of holiness. Chazal tell us about those who are connected to wisdom, that even their simple talk, their mundane, what seems to be their mundane talk, needs to be studied. The Torah, everything is wisdom. Wisdom is how that person interacts with life. Every interaction that that person has with life is wisdom, can be studied. You can find deeper and deeper meanings to the manifestations of a wise soul. If he does his actions without awareness and without intelligence. Then it's like an animal. An animal also reacts to the environment with their imagination. But they don't have the intelligence to realize who they are and what they really want to do. And so they have to follow the script. A human being shouldn't follow the script. A human being has to realize himself. So after time shows and a person who is like an animal, so it doesn't matter if he does good things or bad things because the intentions are not right. So whatever it is, it just looks that way. But that's not what it is.
כמו שאומר הרב המגיד המנוח דב בר, למזל כשמגיד את תלמידו דבר שם טוב, כל אורם יעשה בדס, היינו אפילו סייס גשמיס ואפילו אורם שאוי שחק לי בדס כהינוי. Everything you do, even if you're doing something that is not exactly the way that you think it should be, do that also in accordance with how you think the Creator would want you to do it. So everything you do has to have a spiritual purpose. If not, then it still has a spiritual purpose. But you're not aware of it. You're out of it. You're not noticing. And then, when we don't notice, then we're not synchronized with reality. We think it happened for a different reason. We're interpreting. And now this is going to result in how we perceive further and what we do further. So if we're not in on it, then the purpose has already been defeated. says, When somebody doesn't have the right understanding, even when he does something that seems to be appropriate, it seems to be holy, it's still a foolishness. Because something holy can only be done with the sacred intention that's designed to help life, that's designed to serve the One. If there is no sacred intention, then whatever it is, it's not holy. It cannot be holy. This is the meaning of holiness, sacred intention, because this is the spiritual creation. This is how we're dressing up the Ruach, the spirit, the oxygen that we're breathing in. This is how we're dressing up the life force. And so, Rav Pishu Dvar Mitzvah Chochma, even if he's doing something that seems to be a commandment or it seems to be in line with the wisdom, like two people who eat their carbon Pesach, so one of them is actually gaining something and the other one is just going deeper into his own foolishness. All Those who are foolish are called evil. Because there is no real evil. There is only foolish. Evil is a metaphor for foolish. Why call it evil? Why not foolish? Because if you would call them foolish, the foolish wouldn't get scared. But when you call them evil, then the foolish might get scared and might start trying to become wise. So that they're not evil. which means foolish. And so, foolish means one who doesn't know how to protect himself and his environment. That's what a fool is. A fool loses what's given to him. What, what's given to us? The biggest opportunity in the world. An opportunity that's larger than life. To dress up in flesh and blood and come and do whatever you want. That's the opportunity we were given. And a fool will throw it all, all away. He thinks it's meaningless. And then he's not careful. He doesn't know how to protect himself. He doesn't know how to protect his environment. And then he doesn't have the opportunity to dress up in flesh and blood and do whatever he wants because he can certainly not do whatever he wants. He doesn't even know what he wants. And so, a fool is called evil. Like the wise King Solomon said in Sefer Mishle, All the evil in his explanation for the Torah, which is Mishle, where he explains how the ancient metaphors would dress things up. So he explains that the metaphor 
of evil simply means foolish. person doesn't sin, meaning he doesn't violate himself or anyone else, unless there's a spirit of foolishness inside of him. Why else would he want to hurt anyone? It's not within our nature to want to hurt anything. But when we're foolish, we hurt things and we didn't even know that we hurt them. We were busy with something else. Our mind was in a whole different area. Somewhere deep in our imagination, we were in a whole different reality that doesn't necessarily exist. And so, the wise man is exactly the opposite. It's enough with this to wake up the level of awareness, the level of perception, how to raise everything to its source. Raising everything to its source means to do it for the real reason of why you're doing it. Don't fool yourself of why you're doing it. If you fool yourself, then your perception is going to separate from reality. That's not pleasant. It's not good for you. It's not healthy. And then it doesn't matter what he's doing. It's wise, it's holy, it's sacred because of the one who's doing it. That's the defining factor. That was always the defining factor. But when the one who was doing it can no longer be defined, when everyone was lost in their own perceptions and the words lost their meanings, so now we have to define exactly what you need to be doing. But who are they to tell you what you need to be doing? They were the right ones. They didn't have to follow what they're telling you because they weren't on our level. They were connected to the wisdom. They knew how to serve the One because of how the One created them. And therefore they can tell us. But the goal is for you to become wise and to realize your source of intelligence, to realize who is explaining to you all the things that you know. Was it me? Have I been following you since childhood, explaining to you everything that you know? Was it anyone else? Where is that power? Where is that force that taught you everything you know? Where does it reside? What's its home? And so, when we return to that intelligence that's teaching us, then everything we do is wisdom. That intelligence has only wisdom. And this will convert everything that we do to have the right intention. This, the root of, this, of these things is a very deep concept. Because everything is a dress of the imminent divine that descended into reality. Everything that exists is a dress for the one that exists. Just like every single body part that I have is a dress for my soul, a dress for my spirit. Each one looking different, doing a different function, creating a different energy, different vibration, a different purpose, and yet all a perfect dress to the one who dwells within. So this is an example, this is a metaphor. The human body is a metaphor to the entire cosmos. The metaphor is not just a story, but this metaphor is alive. Whatever is done in the metaphor happens in the collective. Whatever is done by the individual happens in the entire cosmos. 
the one who dwells in the cosmos, is dressed up by the individual. Who am I? He asks, and we answer. Who am I to you? Specifically, whatever you say, he accepts. He's ready to try it on. Let's see how it feels. If it doesn't feel good, get out of there. He doesn't enjoy the dress. Dress him up differently. But we decide who the big man is and what does he want and what is he doing. And all that energy that we create an interpretation that causes our perception gets amplified by the big one who runs everything. This is how we desired it to be. Why would the intelligence create such a being? No one knows. No one ever knew. But the ancient people were smart enough to know that we cannot know. The modern people, some of them think that the ancient people know. Some of them think that they know. But few of them realize that the ancients never bothered with that. They weren't that stupid. And so, everything is a dress for the life force that is dressed up. Who is dressing up is undefinable. It can never and will never be defined who ultimately. But what is us, we can know. And what is us resides in the individual and resides in the collective. There is a small me that is a particle of a much bigger me. And the ones who are conscious, they have all the power. The people on this planet, they have all the choice. They can collect diamonds as much as they want, as fast as they want. Nothing stopping them other than foolishness. Everything we do is permanent and everlasting. It's a dress that we carry for eternity. But what's the appropriate fabric for this dress? What type of perception is pleasing to the spirit? What does she want? Before she came into the body and after she left the body, what does she want? Because here's a place where you can get what you want. If you have the right perception. So everything is a dress of the Shechina. When it's all its kedoshes and holy sparks, as the Mata that came down to the physical, or came down even deeper, even further away, into the other side. What's the other side? Those beings those spirits, those perceptions that are against humanity, that hate individuals or the collective or existence altogether. But those people are the sparks that came down lowest. Not only did they forget their source, but now they're in conflict with their source. They don't have life outside of the collective. No one has life outside of the collective. There's no existence outside of the collective. It doesn't exist. So this perception is completely imagined. As soon as there's no brain, there's no imagination, there's no illusion. The truth becomes obvious. And so these sparks are still sparks of the holy and the sacred. They're just dressed up in some very ugly fabrics. 
fabrics that do not please the spirit. Through the awareness of the individual, he can return these sparks to their original glory, to their full realization, to their attachment to the one, the one, the source, the source that is all. So through awareness, the spark returns to its source. It returns from its spiritual journey into exile and it's coming home, home to the owner. The owner recognizing himself as himself within his domain where he has ownership within his home. So returning these sparks home, all of us experience different sparks of our spirit that are very distant from home. But if it's inside of us, if we're experiencing it, it means it's our spirit, it's our duty to allow this portion of life to find its way home. Find its way home means to be integrated back into the unity from where it came and to where it must return. Everything will return. Not a spark will remain distant when the illusion of perception is removed from the eyes of humanity. Because when humanity will realize the truth, the cosmos will realize the truth. And when the cosmos knows the truth, it will service those that it created. Loyally, like humanity, will service each other and themselves loyally. And so everything is run by the perception of man. Man is the one who is dressing reality and animating it so that it moves, so that it becomes. If man interprets a certain way, the collective interacts in that way. And this includes individuals interacting with each other, where we have shared beliefs that are the basis of our interactions, and this decides the level of kindness or cruelty within our interactions. And then there's the collective, the natural events, the natural disasters, the different accidents and diseases that humanity cannot yet understand. But all of these are a result of conflict. Conflict between the perception of humanity, the beliefs of humanity, and the truth about the cosmos and how it works. Don't turn to the little gods. Perish el midatchem. Don't remove the one force from your awareness. Haina midas lo sefesh ratzchem inuel. When you'll have the right awareness, you will never separate from the source. Kim chazeshom tifresh reg achad midvekes amokem berchi. If for one moment you might leave the the uh, clinging to the source. Then it's counted as if he's already turned towards the distractions, towards the forces that are creating our perceptions, creating our experience. But he's forgotten the one who is experiencing it. He's forgotten the source and the purpose of everything. Like we said before, as soon as you turn away from the source, you're already worshipping other gods. From here we can understand how deeply the Divine Presence is in exile. By realizing that everyone is that, and realizing what everyone thinks they are, we can realize how deeply the Divine Presence is in exile. So we can redeem the Shekhinah, we can redeem the Divine within us through the Levim. says this is 
the awareness of connection. So we, when we become aware of our connection, of our closeness, when we become aware of how intimate we were with, in the entire time with what we're searching for, then there's redemption. Then the divine can realize itself as divine. We saw that Lilimheim, the secret of the little gods, it means it's useless. You're interacting with something that cannot give you life. It can only give you a specific perception. May it be whatever it might be. May the perception be the most desired, the most perfect, the most complete. But if it's not in line with the one who is perceiving, how is any perception going to solve your problem? And this was the mistake of those who worshipped the idols. They worshipped the individual forces. But at the end of the day, the force that lives inside of them wasn't pleased. And this is why eventually their interpretation of civilization just fell apart, crumbled. Why did it crumble? Because it wasn't really in line with the one within. So temporarily, they're making a lot of noise. They seem to know what's going on. They were worshipping this force and this force was helping them win wars. They had the best soldiers. They could conquer three quarters of the world. But can they live? Can they exist perpetually without running into trouble? Will they remain happy? Will they remain motivated to protect themselves and others? No, absolutely not. The human spirit in such an environment loses value. If the goal, the highest, most esteemed power that we're looking for is taking human lives, the human spirit is eventually going to be completely uninterested in continuing this form of existence. And the human being is not interested, he's not winning any wars. Human beings got tired of fighting wars because they didn't know anymore what they're fighting for. They didn't even care about the human spirit so much that they would want to fight. Why are we fighting? Let's just do it easy. And so rather than the human spirit realizing its divinity, realizing its power, realizing the preciousness of this opportunity, the human being was developed to become a killing machine, to just try to outdo the other, to gain enjoyment when others are suffering. This is at the extreme of the other side of the Sitra Akhra. This is completely demonic. This is the enemy of humanity. These beliefs, these thoughts, these perceptions. These drive humanity insane. Insane, destroying themselves. There can be no better definition for insane. One who destroys his opportunity, destroys the opportunity for his children and his grandchildren to realize their true nature, to realize their desire for life, to participate in life. And the way the spirit appreciates And so this drove humanity insane.
and humanity has been tamed, but they're most certainly still insane. Spend all their time virtually running after a human invention called money. It's all about the competition. It's all about outdoing the other. It's all about feeling good when the other one is feeling bad. And so don't waste your time on meaninglessness. That's what it means. Don't waste your time on meaninglessness. Don't, don't invest your present in a future that doesn't exist. There's, they don't have a reality. From this I understood what it says in Tanad Velio. She lost it lovely in the world to come. Yesh le tzach Yisrael in a kiss I give. The body will no longer have to be kept clean, meaning the holiness of the body will be such that it will be completely perfect. Everyone, every organ, every limb will be understood for its true sacredness, for its true divine form. To such a degree that the food will completely be absorbed into the organs, into the limbs, and there will be nothing to separate. We will no longer need bathrooms. And so, when the time is right, humanity will digest everything that they consume. This is the concept of man that Kaisel ate in the desert. They were called a generation of awareness, generation of experiencing the intelligence directly. One who identifies as the source of perception will understand what's being said. And what's being said is that the reason humanity doesn't digest their food fully, the reason that humanity produces things that it itself doesn't appreciate is because spiritually that's what we're creating. Spiritually we're creating things that don't smell so good. The things we say, the things we do, the way we interact with reality has a lot of what we might call extras. Extras that are unnecessary and cannot be properly digested by the spirit. They cause clogging in the digestion of the spirit. Events, experiences that are not in accordance with the nature of the one who is experiencing them. And so, because spiritually we have this weakness, so also physically it reflects the same weakness. That from the energy that we create through what we consume, a portion of it is toxic. A portion of it has to be removed from the body so that it doesn't kill us. This is why it's important that we remove these toxins from our body at the earliest opportunity. We shouldn't hold in what the body wants to reject. But spiritually this reflects our way of thinking, our beliefs how we're manifesting the infinite light. And the part that the body 
doesn't appreciate is the perceptions that we create that are from the other side, that are against humanity. This is what they represent. So when the time will come where humanity will serve only the one, only the source, then humanity will no longer require this function. The body will no longer reject any of the food. And this will indicate that humanity is transforming the energy in a way that is spirit friendly, that is within the, its design, within the nature of the being, the way that it was meant to be. So, may the one be pleased with his creation and may he return us return our perception to recognize our true nature may it happen soon mm -hmm.